This is a do or die battle for the BJP in Uttar Pradesh and here are the top 5 reasons why it has to, has to win the state. Reason number one, Uttar Pradesh is the largest state in India in terms of the number of Lok Sabha seats. It has 80 or about 15% of all Lok Sabha seats. And last time in 2019, there was a very formidable alliance against the BJP and yet it managed to win most of the seats. It, along with a smaller party, managed to get almost 80% of the seats in the state. But if the Samajwadi Party led alliance in Uttar Pradesh manages to take Uttar Pradesh in 2022 or in alliance with smaller parties manages to form a government there, that number, that 62 seats that the BJP got in 2019 could go down to half. And that will be a significant loss in terms of the number of seats that the BJP requires to win 2024 again. But remember that in the past we've seen that in 2018 the BJP lost many states. It lost Karnataka, it lost uh, uh, Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan, Chhattisgarh and in 2019 it came back. PM Modi was able to sweep these states completely and uh, many analysts have said that there is a disjunction. Voters vote for a state government but they might vote for someone else when it comes to the uh, center and that we can see again. So maybe even if the BJP loses uh, UP in 2022, it might still sweep UP in 2024. But remember that state elections do one thing. They determine to a large extent how many people will go from that state to the Rajya Sabha, right? And if the BJP loses in UP, then it will affect its Rajya Sabha numbers. And once again, that uh, its ability to pass bills almost unilaterally without any debate, without discussion, will be affected. So that's the first thing, that it weakens the centre. It makes it difficult for the BJP to win 2024 and even if it manages to win, then the centre becomes weaker. That is the number one reason why the BJP must win UP. Alright, number two is that Uttar Pradesh is a sort of lab for Modi nomics, for PM Modi's political economy. And what is that? That is essentially a combination of two things. One is the politics of polarisation. And the second is giving freebies to the poorest of the poor. And more often than not, the poorest tend to be people from the most backward castes, Adivasis and the non-dominant Dalits, none of whom have found decent representation in the two big parties of Uttar Pradesh, whether it's Samajwadi Party or Bahujan Samaj Party. And they have gravitated towards the BJP, which has managed to find certain local caste alliances and also ensure that the poorest get a lot of handouts and freebies. And these freebies are very different from giving jobs. Uttar Pradesh's record with jobs is very poor, right? If you look at the data put out by CMI, jobs have actually dropped between the period September, December 2016, which is before the Yogi government came to power, and the latest data that we have, which is September to December 2021. The number of employed people has actually dropped in UP. Yet, it is very possible that uh, uh, poor people have been given a lot of money through direct benefit transfer, transfers. In fact, the Yogi government has repeatedly boasted that it has set a record in DBT. Never before has so much happened. It has given direct money to uh, parents to teach their children. It has given money for building homes. And it has been the fastest in uh, passing on the PM Kisan, uh, money to farmers under PM Kisan scheme. So this particular system, this formula, which is on the one hand communal polarization through which a certain segment of the majority votes comes together and stays and the consolidation of that majority vote through giving freebies to the poor. No jobs but freebies. And remember one thing, when someone gets a job, what happens? They don't actually think that the government gave them a job. Even if it's a government job, they think that I was good, I went and uh, took a competitive exam and I got the job. They often don't blame the government also if they lose the job. They tend to, but they don't really directly uh, blame the government for it. They think that they weren't good enough or they blame their bosses, especially if they're in the private sector. However, and you've seen those photographs of how things have, po uh, you know, things being given to the poor actually have pictures of the prime minister and the chief minister being 
uh, put right on those packets. Uh, and the point is that then, at that time, the beneficiaries think that the government is directly giving me. Not just the government, the two people who run this government, whether it is Pr Prime Minister Modi at the centre or Yogi Adityanath at the state level, they have directly made me a beneficiary of this scheme. They deserve my vote. So the recall value of these kind of uh, schemes is much higher when a person goes to vote than getting them a job. So the question is, can the BJP continue to win through this particular formula of polarization and freebies? If it fails, this has a significant, uh, there's a significant lesson in this for the central BJP, for PM Modi, because this is the formula that has been used across India to get votes. If it fails in UP, then it is possibly something that the BJP leadership will have to rethink as a strategy going into 2024. Now, number three. Number three is that Uttar Pradesh is in some ways dominant when, it, when we talk about the Hindi belt or the Hindi speaking belt. And this, is, this has most of the seats. It has the majority of seats uh, when it comes to Lok Sabha. Large part of India's population, of course, resides here. Uttar Pradesh actually leads in terms of setting the tone and discourse of public discourse. Yes, there are the Noida channels who uh, create and set the public discourse, but local newspapers, the Hindi language newspapers, which come out of Uttar Pradesh, have a major role and they kind of influence what is, going, what is uh, uh, the tone for newspapers, which are sometimes editions of these Uttar Pradesh papers in Madhya Pradesh, in Rajasthan, and in that entire neighboring region. If the BJP loses Uttar Pradesh, what happens? Some other government comes to power. And governments have a great ability to actually tighten the screws on media companies and make them fall in line. So an opposition government in UP will have a significant impact on media discourse in the Hindi belt. And to a certain extent, they can actually influence it also with the numerous front page ads that state governments have started putting out. You know how print uh, media is under terrible stress when it comes to revenues and they're heavily dependent on these front page ads which come at a premium. So when state governments give those ads, there is a tendency for editorial line to actually move in that direction and this would have a significant impact when it comes to the Hindi speaking and Hindi belt. Number four, and this is connected in a way, every state actually has a significant ability to give contracts to big corporates, especially in terms of infrastructure, power, tourism, roads, they can give contracts to uh, co corporates. And in this way, they can actually open the door to corporates. If an opposition party begins to rule Uttar Pradesh and has the ability to give contracts to big corporates, then there is a chance that they can actually influence those corporates in two ways. One is corporates control media, they co co uh, control advertising, and they also fund political parties, which is an essential part uh, requirement for winning elections and that would strengthen the opposition going into 2024. And number five, number five has to do with this relationship between the center and state. Today some of the big states are actually ruled by non-NDA parties, whether it is Maharashtra, you take Tamil Nadu, you take West Bengal. Now the uh, point is that if some a state like Uttar Pradesh also goes to the opposition, then this can become a big alliance of opposition states which actually stall any policy or law that the Modi government wants to push which requires cooperation from states. They can cause problems in the GST council and that would be a problem for the centre because the Modi government has a centralising vision. It is in a lot of ways against federalism and when states, large states come together they can put a lot of pressure on the centre and weaken it. And this is another reason why the BJP has to win Uttar Pradesh. So these are the top five reasons why the BJP has to, has to win Uttar Pradesh. Not only because of Uttar Pradesh, but because without Uttar Pradesh, the centre will find it difficult to be stable and strong and dominating. That's the show today. Keep watching News Click. Do subscribe to us, like this video and do share it as well.